I get out there to Omaha, Nebraska, the workout the next day, I don't even have a returning flight. I'm just straight betting on myself. I say, I'm saying to myself, hey, look, I'm about to go ball out in this workout, and I'm going to go get invited to minicamp, which was the next three days, and then my agent going to have to pay for me to come back. That was my mindset. I had to bet on myself. So to my young adults out there, you might be in a situation right now where you like, look, I got this interview all the way in New York. You might be in Florida. You trying to figure out, look, man, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen after that interview, but I got to bet on myself and go for this interview. I got to bet on myself and try out for this team. I got to bet on myself and, 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 you know, if God is telling you transition from being a nine to five and go be an entrepreneur entrepreneur but you might not i still got a nine to five and i'm an entrepreneur too i got a business as well right so 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 you might say hey man look hey i'm about to bet on myself and start my business like whatever that where you sit at right now i'm encouraging you to bet on yourself what up winners man you're now watching and listening to another episode of the tackle thursday with jk podcast i am your host jk K and you all, you know I'm all about helping young adults win in life and at life, and I do so by tackling topics on each episode of the podcast that young adults deal with, that young adults face, that young adults experience. And today, today, man, the topic that I'm tackling, and I encourage you to tackle alongside of me today, is we're going to tackle the topic, bet on you. Bet on you, I don't know, a lot of y'all, some of y'all might like to bet, some of y'all like, might like to bet on other people, you know what I'm saying, if that's your thing, that's your thing, some of y'all might like to bet on teams or whatever the case may be, but if you don't bet on nobody else, you gotta bet on you, you gotta bet on you, right, and so, um, you know, you, you might have heard that saying, man, bet on yourself, you gotta bet on yourself, you probably hear, that, hear a lot of entrepreneurs, right, they talk about that, man, you know, I bet it on myself. I um, did X, Y, Z, or, you know, I took a gamble on myself and and, and, and things of that nature, right? And, and so when I used to hear people saying that, I, I got to be honest, I didn't necessarily think about myself as being one that, you know, bet on myself, right? Um, you know, I'm still fairly new as far as the entrepreneur, uh, you know, being in the entrepreneur world, um, but... And so maybe that might have played a reason on why I didn't perceive myself as just being one that, oh, yeah, man, I bet on myself. Um, but I was having a conversation with one of my coworkers the other day and, uh, you know, and I was just talking and, and, and I mentioned I was like, yeah, man, you know, I had to bet on myself and I was going into get, going into this story, which I'm going to share. Right. Uh, and, I, and I was going into it. And I'm explaining, man, how I had to bet on myself. And I was like, dang, bro, like I really had to the bet on myself. I had to get to a point in my life where, you know, I had to gamble on me, that I had to believe in me and believe in the 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 talents and the gifts that God put in me, um, even when it wasn't a popular belief to have in myself. I had to bet on me. What up, Pop? Well, I see you doing your thing too, boy. God bless you and the fam too, dog. Um, and appreciate that support too, dog. Um, but right, so I had to I realized I like, dang, I bet it on myself, right? And so as I was preparing for uh, this episode, man, because I actually started pre-recording it last week, um, and, and I was at the school, you know, just trying to squeeze some time in to record the podcast, and, and I started, and I was like, man, like, I actually was bet on myself when I was a jit. When I, and those that ain't from Florida, you might not know what a jit is, but when I was a kid, like, I, I bet on myself, right? And, and so I just want to share... To my younger adults out there, man, to those that rock with the podcast, I just want to share three examples, three ways how, you know, I bet on myself and, and, and why I believe it's important for you um, to begin betting on yourself right now. Uh, and, and and I don't know what that looks like for you, but if you examine your own life, I'm, I'm sure there be there are things, there are ways, there are areas of your life that you can begin to bet on yourself right now and and so i think about it so when i was a jit right back in florida growing up um i had to bet on myself right and i didn't know that that's what i was actually doing at the time but when i look back i'm like yo that, yeah that's what i did 
right? And so those that know me, man, growing up, man, I see my boy D. Reed on here, man. We I played three sports. I played at the Boys and Girls Club. I played everything: hockey, soccer. Um, you know what I'm saying? The whole nine. But but I played three specific sports. Um, that my parents organized. That my parents signed up, signed me up for. It was basketball, football, and baseball, right? And so I, I start out with football, go to basketball, then I end with baseball. And I just kept my parents kept it kept it in rotation. And so it came a point in time when I started getting older, um, I, I started to lean more towards basketball and, and football, right? And my parents supported me with everything. Whatever I did, my parents supported me. They got me resources, you know, whether it was uh, hitting lessons, uh, making shot. They worked with me. They got a weight set out in the, on, on the patio, the whole nine. So they was really invested in me in whatever sports I, 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 I chose to play, um, whatever I did. And, but one thing my parents told me uh, was that they said, man, hey, JK, um, my parents, they would never let me quit a sport. They said, whatever you start, Jeremy, you're going to finish. It was like, you don't never have to play this sport again, but whatever you start, you're going to finish, right? And so, um, but one thing they told me, right, I, I wanted to quit baseball a little, little earlier in my years. I would say maybe middle schoolish, right? And my parents was like, nah. They was like, nah, you can't quit that one. It was like, Jeremy, um, these kids are playing year-round. It was like, these kids are playing year-round. You aren't playing year round and you're either better than them or just as good. So there was like, imagine if you dedicated year round to this sport, what you would look like. So they all and, and, and looking back at it and being a parent now, I get it. I get what they saying, because as parents, you see things in your kid that they might not see in themselves yet. And, and you don't want to let your kid give up on something that that you don't want to let your kids give up on something where you know hey, you got a gift for that and that's what i think my parents that's where they was at it was like yo son like i know you i know you good at football i know you good at basketball but son i you good at baseball and you ain't even really trying you better than the people right that playing all year long and as i got older i understood i'm like man Ma, i get it dad i get it and it was all love, man. It wasn't no pressure. Like, they weren't, if you know my parents, man, my parents, they didn't pressure me to do nothing, right? They was just all supportive. So, so like I said, them telling me that was, was out of love, out of, hey, I see something in my son, and I don't want you to put this game down too soon because we see you got, like, people keep comp complimenting you on how you play the game of baseball, and we don't let, want you to drop it. So that's where they were coming from, right? But at the end of the day, though, it was my life, right? And at the end of the day, I had to bet on me. And I knew that baseball wasn't what I loved to do. And then I, that I knew that I was more drawn to football and basketball. I loved the culture of it. I loved the, the music, the, 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 the playing and the pregame and just every, the whole allure of playing football and basketball, right? But it was my sophomore year. Those that, I, that, that heard my story before me, I didn't play um, um, football my sophomore year. I broke my ankle playing baseball freshman year, and I was I was done with baseball after that. Um, and then I didn't play. I I I was done with football as as well. Um, my sophomore year, I was I was done with it. Didn't play my sophomore year of football. Um, and then I started going to my cousin football game. Man, played at Piper, and um, and it brought the love back for me. And then I started going to my high school games, and it brought the love back for the game. And that day, man, and, and I remember. Um, you know what I mean? Um, on uh, on September eighth, two thousand and four, I remember because I used to have it on my sign. It was nine eight zero four. This is what it says: it says nine eight zero four till draft day. Uh, football is the game I love, and that is what I'm going to pursue. You are either with me or I'm going without you. Hard work would take me a long ways in life. That was a declaration I made that day, September eighth, two thousand two thousand and four. I bet on my. I bet. I bet. I bet it on myself. Right, that hey, I'm gonna chase football. That's the game I'm going for. Right, even when hey, maybe my parents thought I was better than baseball, but I believed in me and the game of football. I believe it was in my heart that I said, no, this the game I'm going for. This what I'm gonna go pro in. This what I'm gonna make it to the NFL in. Now I didn't make it to the NFL, but I made it. Pro football. I'm still a one percenter. So I had to bet on me. 
in 10th grade, I bet on me. So my young adults out there, you're never too young to bet on you. You're never too young. Listen to your parents. Like I said, I listened to my parents. I knew they wasn't coming from a mean place. I understood they wasn't coming. And I even understand it even more now being a parent because you see things in your kids that your kids can't see. But at the end of the day, I had to bet on me. And I'm good with that bet. To be a one percenter, no, I didn't make it to the NFL, but I still became a professional football athlete. I made it as close as you could get. One step away. One, one, hey, one step away. Right? So I bet on myself, and that started in 10th grade. Then I had to bet on myself again coming out of for the draft, right? Make a long story short. I came out, came out, I had an agent at the time. Uh, when I signed with the agent, I didn't know the agent didn't believe in me. Right. So from a young adult side there, regardless of the field you work in, if you got an agent, your agent work for you. And if you don't believe your agent believes in you, let them go. Fire them. With all due respect, fire them. Let them go. OK. Right. And so I learned learned the hard way. Right. Right. And so I didn't get drafted. That was the lockout year 2011. Um, and so I reached out to my agent. I was like, I, you know, I asked my agent, I said, man, what, what are we going to do? Like, you know, he was like, man, it's a league called the UFL, United Football League. So like. So you hear uh, the United Football League right now, right? So how they morphed the USFL with the XFL, they, they created the United Football League. Well, before the, this United Football League, there was another United Football League. So my, my, my agent said, hey, man, hey, um, there's a league out there called the UFL. Um, I got a couple of ties, got some relationships out there. Hey, they got an open tryout, right? And so I, I said, all right, cool. So I agree. Hey, man, I'm about to go to the open tryout. I'm about to go to Omaha, Nebraska. I'm about to go to the tryout. And so the thing was, my agent said, I'm not paying for you to go to the tryout. You got to pay. I'm like, hold on. What is what is that? Like, I thought the agent supposed to fund at least so I'm able to get some money and I'm able to he able to get a, you know, whatever, three percent of what I make. But my agent said he was not about to pay for my flight to get to the workout. So I had to make a decision. I knew that football was the game I love. So in, as a sophomore, I bet on myself. Then now, as a as as a 21 year old that wasn't drafted, and I still was pursuing my goals and dreams of making it to the NFL, playing pro football, I had to bet on myself again. So I said, you know what? We made a deal. The bet was, he said, I will pay for your flight home if you get invited to training camp. And because what the workout was, you go to the open workout. If you ball out at the work, open workout and they like you, they'll invite you to training camp. They'll invite you to mini camp, right? And then you get to determine if you, how you do in mini camp determines if you go to training camp. So, so that was a deal. I had to bet on myself again. So I got on the plane, right? Shout out to my pastor. He, he got me a whole three-piece suit. Like he said, man, look, you got to go, you got to go uh, looking. This is an interview. So now, you know, my athletes out there, when you go dress to a workout, you got on sweat gear, sweatpants, hoodie. So I'm seeing the people in the airport on my airplane that's going out. He'll be going to Omaha, Nebraska for this open workout. I see them got sweats on and all that. They get ready going to the workout. I got a three piece suit on. And this wasn't like no slim fit suit. This was like back in 2011. So this wasn't a big boy. The Steve Harvey suit was still in. Man, I'm, I'm in a three-piece suit going to a football workout, but I had to bet on myself. My agent wouldn't pay for me, so I had to find a way to get out there and go to the workout. So like I said, my pastor looked out for me with the, with the suit. I want to say he chipped in on the, on the flight as well, um, you know what I'm saying? And everybody, whoever chipped in, man, hey, we found a way. I got out of there. I bet on myself. So here I am. I get to Omaha, Nebraska. I got no returning flight. The workout is the next day. So my agent did get me a hotel room along with his other client, right? And so I get out there to Omaha, Nebraska. The workout the next day, I don't even have a returning flight. I'm just straight betting on myself. I say, I'm saying to myself, hey, look, I'm about to go ball out in this workout, and I'm going to go get invited to minicamp which was the next three days, and then my agent going to have to pay for me to come back. That was my mindset. I had to bet on myself. So to my young adults out there, you might be in a situation right now where you like, look, I got this interview all the way in New York. You might be in Florida. You trying to figure out, look, man, I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen after that interview, but I got to bet on myself and go for this interview.
I got to better myself and try out for this team. I got to better myself and, 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 you know, if God is telling you transition from being a nine to five and go be an entrepreneur, but you might not. I still got a nine to five and I'm an entrepreneur too. I got a business as well. Right. So, so, so you might say, Hey man, look, Hey, I'm about to bet on myself and start my business. Like whatever that, where you sit at right now, I'm encouraging you to bet on yourself. Right. And so I went out there to that workout. Not knowing how I was gonna get home, but the belief was I was about to get invited to mini camp, and my and my agent was gonna have to pay uh, find me a flight home. So I went out there to the workout. I ran the fastest I ever ran in my life, four four six. This was crazy though. Months before, just like two three months before at my pro day, I wore I weighed one hundred eighty four pounds. I ran a four five six, right? Four five six, something like that, right? Then. Two months later, I'm 191, so I was heavier, and I ran a 446. So I ran a 446 at the Omaha workout, right? For the UFL workout. Then in one on ones, I got a pick. So the workout over, now they start calling people who get invited to the minicamp. They're saying, you know, man, all I hear. Jeremy Keller, I'm like, let's go. So my agent lost the bet. So I bet on myself. I went to my UFL workout, not knowing how I was going to get home, but believing that I was going to get in, I was going to ball out and get invited. God was going to bless me to ball out, get invited to the mini camp, and my agent was going to have to pay for my flight. And guess what? I bet on myself. I went out there with no returning flight. God blessed me to do my thing. God blessed me to get invited to the mini camp. And so when I called my agent, I'm like, yo, I got invited to the mini camp. Guess what he had to do? He had to pay for my flight back, right? But it, but it started with me betting on myself. I had to believe in myself. Even when my agent didn't believe in me, I had to believe in me. That, that it's people, some people in your corner that you think they in your corner, you think they rooting for you, and they really don't believe in you. And even though they don't believe in you, you still got to bet on you. And then lastly, man, lastly, right? Last time, um, last thing, story, right? Better on myself. Um, so in 2015, uh, in arena football league, I led the arena league in, in interceptions, right? I was arena defensive back of the year, balled out, um, right. Total that season, including playoffs, I had 15 picks, right. One, five, 15 picks. Right. And, uh, went into the off season, um, things didn't work out, you know, um, you know, the way that I thought it was going to work out. So, uh, I, I chose not to come back, uh, right, for mini camp, for training camp, right? And I remember having this conversation with my wife. We ain't had no kids yet. We were just newlyweds. We only been married um, maybe like five, six months, right? And um, and she said, she said, Jeremy, when I when I told my team I wasn't coming back, she said, Jeremy, like, I didn't think you was going to do it. I didn't think you was going to go through it. And I told her, I said, look, I said, I have basically – I said, look, I had to believe in me. I said, I had to show you as my wife, and then I had to show our future kids that when you believe in yourself and you know your worth, that you don't settle, and that basically you bet on yourself, that you take the risk and bet on yourself when you don't feel like you're getting what you're worth or when you don't feel like, um, you know, that, that you know, you're not appreciated, right? That you you can't let that slide. And and so my decision on not going back was because I knew it was bigger than me. That I wanted to show my wife, like, look, I ain't going to just let nobody, if I feel like somebody doing me wrong, I'm not just going to let them get over. That I'm going to stand up for myself. And then for our future kids at the time, we, went, we didn't have kids. I was like, look, this for them. Because I want them to know that if they ever got an opportunity and they, if they know they value, they know they worth, and they don't feel like they're getting it in return, that they stand on they one, that they stand up, bet on they self, and choose to leave or choose to go to another opportunity where they are appreciated, right? And so it was bigger than me. And so I bet on myself. I did not go to training camp that, 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 that season on time. And I said, man, I'm about to do my pro day again. So here I am, 2016, I was like, what, 26? I'm a 26-year-old, and I went back and did my pro day again, right? Now, did it work out for me? Did I get signed to an NFL? Nah, I didn't get signed to an NFL team, right? And, and, and so I want y'all to know when I'm telling you young adults out there, man, when I say bet on yourself, sometimes when you bet on yourself, sometimes it might not work out, 
right? So I share it, right? That when I bet on myself and I went to that workout and I had no return in flight, I flew way out there to Omaha, Nebraska, didn't know how I was going to get home, right? That It worked out for me because I got the, the, the risk paid off and I got invited to minicamp, right? So it worked out for me that time. But when I bet on myself and went to pro day, I didn't get signed by no NFL team. But what, what betting on myself taught me and just showed me was that, hey, bro, like, I set a precedence in my life to bet on myself, right? That, like, some of us, we just need to bet on ourselves. And even if it don't work out, you just need to get used to betting on yourself. Because cause, cause for so long, you've been selling yourself short. For so long, you've been letting the doubts of other people tell you not to take risks. And you like, man, and people tell you, man, you don't know if you got enough money. I don't know if you got enough education. Man, you know, no, everybody, nobody in our family ever moved and went across the world. Nobody in our family ever left our hometown. And, and, and people try to talk you out of your decisions. And, and, man, even if it didn't work out for you, you need to, you need to set the precedent in your life to start Betting on yourself because I'm telling you, by me betting on myself in 2000, when I was a jit, when I was a kid, sophomore in high school, I bet on myself and I chose football. Even though my parents thought I was better in, better in baseball, I bet on myself. And it set a precedent in my life that if, I, if I'm ever faced with a decision, if I'm ever faced with opportunities, I'm going to bet on me. Not irresponsibly, not not in the wrong way, but I'm saying that I'm going to believe enough in me. I'm going to believe enough in what God put in me to bet on me and to believe that, hey, the gifts the, that God has given me, hey, I got what it takes, right? So, so what I want you to understand, my young adults, people that's listening, right, bet on yourself. Bet on yourself. You might be playing it safe right now on your job because you like to pay and it's comfortable, but you know you want to do more. But on the but in order to get to more, you might have to take a risk and bet on yourself. You might have to go start a company on your own. You might have to reach, step out in the deep end where you don't know what the end, the outcome gonna be, but you gotta take a leap of faith because you gotta bet on you. So when you start to bet on yourself, you set a precedent in your life that that especially the younger you do it, that you are always going to bet on you, that you're going to even when people, other people around you. Not maliciously, but even when other people around you that love you so much, they might not even understand what you're trying to do. And even though they don't understand, as long as you understand, because in the by and by, it'll make sense in the by and by. They'll be like, oh, that's what you was doing. That's why you bet on yourself. I ain't see it at first, but that's why you bet on yourself. And then another thing, right, when we, when we, when we think about betting on ourselves, what it does for us is that it help, when you bet on yourself, whether you win or lose, or whether, it, whether the outcome turns out exactly how you want it or not, when you bet on yourself, you can live with the results. Ooh. Hey, when you bet on yourself, it don't, care, it don't matter what the results are. You can live with it. Think about it. If I'm in the game, if I'm LeBron, if I'm Jordan, if I'm Curry, and, and I got to take a game winning shot, I guarantee you, Curry, Jordan, LeBron, they sleep better at night when they miss the game winning shot. Why? Because they bet on themselves. So even if they miss, they're like, look, man, I live with me missing. But if you got the shot and you pass it and you don't bet on yourself, but you bet on somebody else and they drop the ball, they miss the shot. You like, man, boy, I'll tell you, boy, I should have, man, I should have bet it on me. Now you live with regrets. So what I'm trying to tell you is bet on yourself, because when you bet on you, when you bet on you, regardless of what the results are, you can live with them because you knew. You know you bet on you. That you could bet on yourself and be okay with it if the business don't succeed because you had enough faith in you to launch out in the deep and start a new business. You could, you could, because if you say, man, if you stay working for somebody when you know it's in you to start your own company and 20 years go by, you say, man, I should have bet it on me. You're going to feel, you're going to have regrets. But I promise you, man, you not having regrets. Even I'm gonna tell you this, right? I pulled my hamstring, 
right? And those that been knowing me, but I put my hamstring when I played for the uh, New Orleans Voodoo. The Jets called me. New York Jets called me 10 days later. Hey, we got to work out for you. You healthy? I'm like, yeah, because I ain't getting no tryout, no workout coming out, of, coming out of the NFL. I mean, coming out of college. So I wasn't going to pass up this opportunity, right? But guess what? I went. I was hurt, but I gave it my all. I still better than me. And guess what? I got no regrets. I got no regrets. I could live with the results of me not making it to the NFL. I could live with the results of me not getting signed by the New York Jets. Why? Because I bet it on myself and I went and gave it my all. And so what I just want to close by saying to my younger adults out there, bet on you. One, bet on you. Even when people around you don't believe in you. Not maliciously. It's going to be people that, that's hating on you, that don't believe in you. But it's going to be people that really love you and, 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 and unintentionally don't believe in what you're doing because they don't understand it. And even if that happens, still bet on you. And then I want you to understand when you start betting on you, now you set a new precedent in your life that in other areas of life, you're going to bet on yourself. You're going to bet on yourself. The younger you start betting on yourself, the more you're going to do it. In other areas of your life, start to bet on you. Stop betting on other people. Stop having more faith in other people than you got in yourself. Bet on you. And then understand that when you bet on you, it's easier to live with the results. When you miss the game when a shot, you can live with that. But if you pass up the game when a shot and give it to somebody else and they miss, mm, now you might have regrets. You might be like, man, I should have took that. Right? So, man, hey. Continue to bet on yourself, believe in yourself, keep God first, and, 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 and don't give up on what God put, do not give up on what God put in you to pursue and to be and to become. And hey, appreciate y'all for listening. Continue to wake up, strive to win on purpose, be intentional about winning, and y'all have a blessed day.